Well, hello and welcome to the Pro Day Sports Podcast. Again, I'm Chris Dory, one of the science contributors. Um, kind of been out a little bit, uh, working out of state and quite a bit of traveling uh, the uh, past little bit. And, and I really started to think about something with training that I wanted to bring into discussion for today. And that is on the subject of concentric and eccentric contractions. So most people... When they hear the word, they're going to think, what in the world is that? When we go into the gym, we're going to do our resistance training. And, uh, you know, first thing we think, man, I'm going to do bench press. I'm going to do bicep curls. And we have all the traditional uh, deadlift uh, squat exercises that uh, we're going to uh, do. If we're thinking of it in terms of physiology and anatomy, we're going to break down uh, muscle movements into two uh really major uh, types that we're going to use, and that is concentric and eccentric contractions. So a concentric contraction would be a traditional bicep curl. I am decreasing the angle of the joint as I pull uh, the weight closer to the chest, and what you're doing is you're actually shortening the length of the fibers, muscle fibers, okay? The reverse movement of that is an eccentric contraction. Okay, and there's a little more verbiage with it, but you know, keep it simple. And as you lower a bicep bar, if you will, or if you got your weights there, you are still holding tension in the muscle fibers, okay, but you are increasing the length of the muscle fibers themselves. So both of them require energy. Both of them activate the neuromuscular pathway, um, but they have a little bit of different outcomes when we start to apply perhaps different approaches to working out. So most people have focused on concentric contractions. Okay, I'm going to go to the gym and see how many ab curls I can do. I'm I'm going to see how much weight I can curl up to my chest. Uh, You know, bench press is the same way. But uh, the past two decades, a focus, a lot of focus in the academic world has been put into the eccentric contraction. So perhaps uh, maybe this will bring about just a different thought process in how you design your training um, and how you approach what an actual workout is in the body. So for uh, uh, many folks, they might have done something called a negative. This is kind of what I remember learning about and and I, I hated them, but uh, I remember actually seeing a little more progress with them. So if I'm going to do a negative, which is an eccentric, in other words, just, uh, for eccentric contraction, with my bicep curls, I would do my, you know, if it's uh, three sets or four or five sets, whatever you're at, you get to the last one, you're tired by this point, you know, and you're going to generally drop the weight a little bit, and I would curl the bicep. Uh, the weight, pull it to the chest, and then I would hold it in position, slowly lower it. So I'm still activating the muscle. I'm tired, but I'm trying to hold it 30 seconds, 20 seconds, 60 seconds, depending on what your you know your workout routine would be. And you're essentially working the muscle fiber, but from a different perspective. Instead of shortening that muscle uh, fiber, you're lengthening it very slowly. So you're still activating it. Usually you're going to be shaken, and, and it's terrible. It's a terrible thing, but the research has actually shown that eccentric contractions can oftentimes produce a uh, a much greater effect than the focus of concentric contraction training. Okay, so let's go back and look at uh, some of the studies here. i got two of them for today to kind of throw out there. This was published going back to 1996, so, you know, this has been around for a little while. It's uh, uh, nothing new, but uh, oftentimes we don't focus on it a lot in the, uh, you know, training world. So here's the title. It's the effects of concentric and eccentric training on muscle strength, cross-sectional area, and neural activation. Uh, this is published in the Journal of Applied Physiology. Again, 1996, we got several authors there. And uh, essentially what they did is they took uh, about 20 test subjects and... They split them up into two, actually three groups. You had a concentric training group, an eccentric training group, and a control group. They didn't really do anything. 
And so what they did is the concentric group, both of them uh, worked out the uh, quadriceps, okay, and the legs. And uh, they had one group focus on just doing concentric exercises and the other one doing uh, eccentric. At the end of the week, study, it was 10 weeks. Uh, they took um, the individuals, they test their strength. They looked at the thickness or the cross-sectional area of the muscles. And they kind of try to measure the neural activation of it, which is kind of another thing. And uh, kind of interesting, what they found is uh, they had, uh, let's see, the, the concentric train group had about a 18.4 and 12.8% increase in strength and cross-sectional area. The uh, eccentric train group had a uh, 6.8 and 36.2% increase in uh, cross-sectional area. And the control group didn't change too much. Uh, and these were statistically significant uh, when you look at kind of some of the data here. Uh, very interesting there. Uh, there's some more pieces of information, but, uh, you know, the study basically was both concentric and eccentric training do increase uh, strength and cross-sectional area. But there was a little bit more of a focus on the eccentric training because you saw a greater uh, uh, production increase in strength and cross-sectional area um, in that particular area. There's another study, if we kind of fast-forward, um, and this is published in, uh, let's see, 2017, so just a couple years back. This is looking at chronic adaptations to eccentric training. So when we think of chronic, that's kind of long-term. And this was a review uh, published in the uh, Sports Medicine Journal. And, uh, uh, of course, what they did is they took eccentric training, uh, and focused in resistance training athletes, and started to look at, okay, what kind of adaptations occur over time and, and uh, here's what they uh, kind of found. This is the results section, so we'll kind of read through some of this. Quote, eccentric training elicits greater improvements in muscle strength, although in a largely mode-specific manner. Superior enhancements in power and, and stress shortening cycle function have also been reported. Eccentric training is at least as effective as other modalities in increasing muscle cross-sectional area, while the pattern of hypertrophy appears nuanced and increased cross-sectional area. Uh, may occur longitudinally within muscle. There appears to be a preferential increase in the size of type 2 muscle fibers and the, the potential to exert a unique effect upon fiber type transitions. Qualitative and quantitative changes in tendon tissue that may be related to the magnitude of strain and pose have also been reported with the eccentric training. Okay, end quote. So uh, basically, you know, eccentric training might be better for the morphological or the, the changes in the muscle architecture and the tendons and ligaments, uh, as well as the muscle, muscle fiber types when you're looking at long-term adaptations, okay? Doesn't mean you should throw concentric training, nor can you throw it out the door, but it might be something to consider working into uh, some of your traditional uh, training types. So perhaps every so often, uh, you know, looking at, can I hold a squat in place? Uh, or can I, uh, you know, hold a, a bicep curl in place? Or perhaps, uh, you know, uh, contracting and holding in place the uh, 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 bench press. Um, so there's different ways to work it in, and there's different ways that many trainers already do a, a fantastic job of this. Uh, again, you're, you're looking at activating the the neural pathways, as well as you know, contracting the muscles and uh, hopefully getting a, an increase in strength and size, something that you're going to want to do while in the gym. So uh, just, again, kind of looking at concentric versus eccentric contractions. Uh, when we go to the gym, generally the focus is on concentric, but it's, it's not a bad idea to throw some eccentric contractions in there, uh, kind of hold uh, uh, the muscle fibers in place and, and see how long you can last there. Uh, you might start to see a, some... Uh, greater changes or increases in strength across sectional area. Perhaps you've hit a plateau, uh, something interesting to, to throw into place. Again, I'm Chris Dory, and this is Pro Day Sports Podcast. Have a fantastic day.